Hey there guys, what's going on? It's Gail right here, back on the 5.9 channel, and we are here to cover the bottom 5 moments of E3, or the top 5 disappointing moments of E3. Today with me, we have Ignan, Ruboy, and Talon, of course, giving their own thoughts on what is the top 5. Of course, we're going to be going from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So be on the lookout for that. Of course, if you guys want to leave your own bottom 5 moments of E3, leave it in the comment section down below. Of course, if you like this video in and you enjoy it, Hit that like button, of course. Subscribe for more gaming content on the channel. And let's get right into number five. Number five, Capcom. I do believe Capcom wasn't the worst performing one out of everybody here. But that's not saying much. Capcom barely brought anything to the table, quite honestly speaking. For their tweets saying, or from their tweets saying, effectively, that we were going to be getting news for games, including Ace Attorney, Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Hunter Stories, and Resident Evil Village, that ended up being just those four. We literally just got information about those four. Um, we got an announcement for an Ace Attorney collection, basically a porting over from some uh, Japanese games on the 3DS to modern day consoles uh, into the West, of course. And then we got some news for monster hunter collabing well with well monster hunter so stories collabing with uh, rise and vice versa and then of course the announcement that resident evil village was getting dlc now to me while i am okay with that information that was fine i think as a basis that's a-okay because that was to be expected but at the same time for what was supposed to be a 40 minute press conference from what i remember it felt extremely flat there was no information they held they had so much potential capcom owned so many ips uh mega man street fighter so on and so forth and they just didn't bring anything to the table whatsoever devil may cry there was nothing there was absolutely nothing it was such a disappointment uh overall in my personal opinion they could have announced something at the very least because for if what we got was what we already kind of knew apart from I guess the ace attorney stuff But literally everything else we already knew was happening even the resident Evil 8 e uh, or resident evil village stuff We kind of already knew we were gonna be getting DLC. It was expected They didn't even show any DLC They didn't even say anything of what the DLC was going to be if if they had that would have also been something but they just didn't uh, so it's a damn shame that uh, we got what we got. I think they could have done a whole lot better in terms of, uh, you know, bringing more to the table. But I do not think they were the worst ones to uh, worst ones of this conference at all. I don't think they were the worst ones at E3. Um, that credit goes to some other titles uh, that are going to be coming up, or more specifically, other press conferences that will be coming up. So I'm going to hand it over to Ruboy, who will be giving his thoughts on what is take twos and gearboxes conferences for numbers four and three all right guys ruboy here and at number four we have actually got gearboxes showcase so when i saw this event during e3 i honestly thought if i was going to make a top five disappointing list this would be way higher up but somehow some way there was actually more disappointing moments so gearbox is down to number four and in hindsight this is actually a solid spot for it in this type of a list because they actually try to do something Right, they did show off multiple games, so we did get the indication that they worked on multiple games, they had gameplay for them for us to watch. So they actually tried to do a little something with their showcase, they even tried to get a little bit creative with their presentation style, as they were sort of presenting their information, talking, to give it a nice overall just feel and vibe to it, and trying to grab our attentions and give us a good time. However, it just didn't hit. It just did not hit home. Their effort, unfortunately, their efforts were in vain because it was just too freaking boring, man. Like, let's just be honest. The thing was just too boring. Like, I literally had multiple cups of coffee and I still dozed off. Like, I still actually knocked off in and out of this showcase, which is ridiculous because I'm not a person that sleeps during the day. But in the beginning, my main issue with it is why, like, what's up with all the talking? Like, why were they holding so many conversations? You know what I mean? Like, are, are y'all like hanging out? Are y'all with friends or something? What's up with all these words? We're not in a literature class. We're not in English 101. This is E3. We're trying to look at games, okay? We're trying to see gameplay, not watch people speak. If you wanted to see that, we would watch a freaking podcast or we'd watch a YouTube video like we like some of you are right now. You know what I'm saying? We wouldn't be watching E3 to, to hear people talk about multiple words for minutes on minutes. Then when it came to the games, they did do a good job of actually showing us gameplay and like actually presenting multiple games. However, they just weren't exciting at all. 
Like, they had no hype to it, in my personal opinion. Like, when I saw these games, like, they didn't look exciting to me at all whatsoever, no matter how much they tried to talk it up. It was just impossible. And I mean, come on. Like, I, I, in my opinion, like, the most hyped game that they announced during their part was Godfall. Like, really? Your most hyped game you're going to announce at E3 is Godfall of all games? The one that had so many issues on the PS5 on release? All that, all that problems, and it wasn't even that interesting gameplay. Like, the gameplay actually was boring. Graphics were okay, but I mean, graphics are pretty much universal in almost every single game that comes out in 2021. Like, you need, a game needs to have more than just graphics, you know what I'm saying? So that was, that, the fact that that was the hypest thing they had to announce was utterly ridiculous. And then last but not least for Gearbox, their ending was utterly pathetic, okay? In my opinion, their ending, the way they ended their showcase was pathetic, and it was just reeked of desperation by trying to bring out Kevin Hart. They actually tried to bring out Kevin Hart and give him screen time in order because they thought he would save their presentation of boredom. But I'm sorry, it just made it worse, okay? It just made it worse. Next up at number three, we have got Take Two Showcase. And this right here, folks, was utterly abysmal. Their event was actually disrespectful, blasphemous, and just utterly asinine. Like, I don't know what in the world they were thinking. Like, they actually showed up to E3 and they had the unmitigated gall. The unmitigated gall to do that nonsense drivel. The ridiculousness. What the heck was that? That was 40 minutes long. Again, that showcase event was 40 minutes long. 40 minutes of our day. We're never going to get back again. Gone. In the wayside. For nothing. Nothing at all. They didn't show anything. No games, no gameplay, not even a mention of a game title. They didn't. They could have. They didn't even show us a half a game, a fifty cents of a game, not a quarter game, not a. Nick, they could even show. They didn't even show us a thumbnail. You couldn't show us a thumbnail or a cover art, anything whatsoever about gaming. No, no, no. They didn't. They. I guess they didn't get the memo, y'all. I guess Take Two didn't get the memo. They thought this was a Zoom call. They thought they were on Zoom with their fellow coworkers and they could just hang out and talk about controversial topics. Or maybe they thought they were on a podcast with a bunch of their other YouTube friends, Twitch friends, whatever the case may be, talking about whatever whatever, whatever comes to their mind. Talking about whatever comes to their mind in their podcast. That's what they thought they were doing. They didn't understand. They don't know what E3 is. They don't, they don't know the letters and numbers. Are you kidding me? And then, or maybe they, thought, maybe they thought it was a discussion video. Maybe they thought it was a discussion video that they can later edit, timestamp, and then upload onto YouTube on their own time. They didn't know that they were live. They didn't think they were live and people were actually taking the time out of their days to watch this drivel. You know what I'm saying? I mean, ridiculous, man. Like, are you serious? And I would rather, I would literally, I'm not even, I'm not even capping or exaggerating. I would actually rather watch grass in the summer turn brown than watch that nonsense again. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Like, what? And I knew from the very beginning that this is going to be trash. Fodder belongs in the toilet next to Jar Rule, flush it down the drain, never want to see this again. Based off the mentioning of the words discussions, diverse. Like, what? What are y'all doing? What in the. Do you, I, 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 do you guys not have degrees? Like, do you need to go back to high school and study, study and read, like, what E3 is? Like, do you not understand what this is, y'all? Like, what are we talking about here? There, there you go, y'all. Take two at number three. Woo, Rude Boy got a bit heated there, but I completely agree. But now, y'all want to know something even more disappointing? Talk about Bandai, number two. Okay, so Bandai. <laughs> Bandai owning as many IPs as they do. A lot of us, myself included, was expecting them to come into E3 swinging. You know, show us something exciting. Give us then a new Dragon Ball game, a new Naruto game, a new Sword Art Online game even. Like, just a new anything. Bandai has access to so many IPs at their disposal. And what did they do for the entire their entire conference? They showed literally nothing but one single game, which was House of Ashes. I don't know what House of Ashes is, to be honest, but I mean, if you're hyped for that game, good for you. I'm just disappointed Bandai showed literally nothing else. Like, it's, it, like, why? Bandai was one of the, the conferences we were all excited for, because, okay, Microsoft, Nintendo, Bandai, they're going to knock it out, surely, right? No, not at all. Bandai came there, yeah, E3, biggest gaming event of the year, yo, let's just show one game for the entire company, it was very, 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 very disappointing, personally, I think Capcom's even more disappointing, because they have even more high quality IPs compared to Bandai, I feel like Bandai is more of a quantity type of situation, but Capcom has a huge quality of IPs, but I mean, both are just super disappointing to me, 
Like, like I said, Bandit, look, y'all could have showed us anything else. Like, showed us anything, bro. I wouldn't even been mad if they just showed us Cat Cry, the game that's been out for, like, two years. Like, just show, oh, yeah, look. By the way, new Cat Cry DLC dropped, like, a month or two ago. Like, just show us something. They literally came there and showed us one game. One game for the entire conference. But, yeah, so that that's pretty much it for me. Let's move on to Tyler for a number one spot, and I'll see y'all in the next one. And finally, coming in at number one, guys, for our most disappointing reveal from E3 2021, it was the entire event. It was garbage. It was absolutely just, I, I can't, I can't even believe that it happened. I'm done. I quit gaming. I'm out. I'm out. Bye. Now, okay, all jokes aside, guys, obviously the, the event was still pretty good. It had its tight moments and everything. But overall, I would say the most disappointing factor of E3 2021 for most of us here at Five Nine was just simply there wasn't that big wow factor i think that a lot of us were expecting like we obviously got some cool moments and everything from games but it, we already knew about most of these games like they were revealed before there were definitely a lot of things that were still missing from it even new reveals for something like for me personally with battlefield 2042 we already knew that game was going to be coming out this year anyway we knew it was going to happen so i was like where was the big like oh my gosh reveals i mean we got like, like a couple of them like for me personally with metroid and everything but it just felt like this year was trying to play catch up from last year due to the pandemic. And I by no means blame any of the developers for not, you know, obviously having to play catch up and everything when it came to what the world has just simply gone through. But I would just say it feels like they're still trying to send off the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. And then, you know, this is kind of the big start to the PS5 and the Xbox Series X even though most people still can't buy the new consoles and i get it i get why they're starting to now bring a bunch of these games onto those older gen and people are still pretty mad about that i'm not sure how i personally feel about it myself yet but it'll be interesting to see going forward what's going to happen here and you know with all the chip shortages and everything like that it's still going to be probably another year or two until we really see things back to normal and then it's by then it's like well okay so technically your console's been in you know around for three years now that's quote unquote considered old technology to some people so again we'll have to wait and see what they're going to do and everything and what happens with next year's uh, e3 2022 but otherwise I, I don't know we just we just felt like it, it wasn't like the, the you know the ooh -ah thing that we normally expect so I, again that that's what we personally think here at five nine for our top bottom top bottom uh most disappointing part of e3 2021 with that being said guys that is going to wrap it up for this video though this has been our top five picks for most disappointing uh reveals and just overall parts of e3 2021 let us know your thoughts below in the comments when it comes to this uh do you think we are a little too harsh do you agree with our choices do you disagree what are your top five uh you know least favorite moments of e3 2021 and uh what do you hope that can be revealed and improved upon for next year because again anything like this you know you always want to say okay we didn't like this so let's improve upon it for next time so let's know your thoughts in the comments as always and if you happen to like this content make sure you hit that sub button hit the like button hit the notification bell all that fun stuff to keep up to date on everything here at five nine and if you also want to go ahead and check out our top five moments from e3 2021 where we talk about all the hype and everything like that because again you got to be on both sides of the coin so anyway guys I've been Talon, been joined by Ignit, Gale, and Ruboy, and we will see you all in the next one. Johnny.